What's up business builders coming at you with another value video. We're starting a brand new series. Okay. So a uh, little plug here. If you're not already plugged into our private Facebook group, hiring and recruiting strategies for moving companies, then I suggest that you get tagged up in there. Um, Brett will put it right here. And um, if you're seeing this on our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit a like subscribe and we're going to get going. So this uh, next series we're going to do is all based on retention. Okay. Uh, yes, hiring, recruiting, that stuff's super important, bringing in new talent, but just cause you brought in the people doesn't mean, and you hire them doesn't mean that that solves your problem. Like if you still have the revolving door, that doesn't do you any good, right? So if you hire a bunch of people and then they leave, you're starting right back where you were. So uh, this, in my opinion, is probably like the secret sauce, and it's the stuff that I love teaching the most. So um, outside of uh, maybe culture, this is one of the things that it's hard to put an ROI behind these this work, but you can visibly tell over weeks and months and definitely over years when you begin to work on retention. So let's break it down. Um, this week's video, I want to talk about basically the question of at what point do you have someone hired, right? Because I could give somebody a, an offer of employment and they could come work for us, but they might leave after two days, right? Like it leaves you with a big question mark. What, what the heck happened there? Or they work for you for a week or two weeks and then they ghost you. They're gone. You never hear from them again. I quit. What? Or you hired them, you gave them an offer and... You, you never even see them for their first day of work. So the question is, at what point do you have someone hired? Okay. And you could use a different term here. You know, this could be like a real hire or this could be somebody that's stuck. So you kind of think about your stick rate. But um, I want to break down like a couple different core components. But before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the thought process here. So I think if you begin to look at your business in this fashion where you're you're really every single thing you do is about getting a person to 90 days. Okay. And this is a lot around movers and drivers. So, but I think you can apply this stuff to other areas, your CSRs, your admin, your sales, your management, anybody that's a part of your company, you could plug into this model. So making everything you do about getting people to the 90 day mark. Okay. And what's significant about that is by the time somebody stays with you for 90 days, they're probably at least to an extent, committed in some way. Okay, you've had enough time to get to know them and you, you've had had the time to put an imprint on them with your culture, with your company culture. So let's talk about that philosophy. And the philosophy is this, every step in the process is a test. Okay, every step in the process is a test. So whether you're interviewing them before you ever hire them, that's a test. Uh, their first day of work, that's a test. Their, you know, three week mark when they go out on that huge move, right? That's a test. It's a really like cold and cruddy day and they're scheduled to work. That's a test. Are they going to be on time? Right? So every single thing that you do in your process is a test. And what you're really trying to achieve is you're trying to grow your core group. Okay. Your core group is your, your most committed and valuable people that you can rely upon every single time. Um, it doesn't really do me a lot of good to have a bunch of guys that are in like my C team, right? A team, B team, C team. So my C team are just like really loosened people that work part time. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They've got another job somewhere else. So every step in the process is a test. And, and just remember, just because you hire someone doesn't mean you have someone hired. And I know that really can be confusing if you were to just read it, but Think about this thought process. You don't know what you have your hands on until you've spent some time with them, until they've went out on jobs, they've been on the trucks, they've gotten to know your team, right? And you don't know what you have your hands on, right? Until you get to meet this person. So there's four criteria I'm gonna cover. These are four things that I believe if you can notch these off, that you can say, okay, we've got this person plugged in. Like this person uh, can go kind of in this core group at least beginning to move towards it. They might be a B, B, uh, B team uh, person on your roster. So the first one, which I already alluded to, is 90 days. Um, this person needs to be at your company working for 90 days consistently, 
Okay, not like they started, then they didn't work for two months, then they worked for a month. Um, consistently working for 90 days consecutively to really go into this category of, okay, we've got somebody, put a, put a dark circle around them, right, on your org chart. Um, number two, uh, that this person has provided at least three employee referrals. The reason this one is important is because if a new hire, anybody that's within their first 90 days, if they've not referred someone else to work there, that tells me that they really don't believe in the company. They don't believe in the, the mission, okay? And that it's a good place to be. Because if they did, they'd be telling all their buddies and their friends, dude, you gotta get a job here, dude, you gotta come check this place out. So in my opinion, until you get at least three, Three, just three referrals. Doesn't mean that those all those guys have to get hired, but at least a referral, okay? What this is also gonna do, a big side benefit, is it's gonna make your team and your company hyper-focused on uh, pushing for referrals. Because at the end of the day, that's the best hiring lead is a referral. All right, number three, all right? This is ch uh, criteria for at what point do you know you have someone hired? It's their primary source of income. Another way of saying this is that they work full time or they work most of their hours with you. Um, but I know that if this is not their full source of income, then I really don't have like a core person, right? If they're working five days a week at this other job and they just work with me on the weekends, that's fine. Like, and they might be a great team member and a great mover. But as I'm thinking about scaling and growing the team, uh, I, I really need people that this is their main thing. This is their main source of income. This is what they're committed to. Number four criteria is they've earned a raise and a promotion. All right, so what I teach a lot of times is that you hire someone and then you have a 30-day performance review. And that's their first chance to get a raise. You may not necessarily promote them, but a promotion doesn't necessarily have to be that they went from a mover to sales or ops manager or whatever. It could be that you break your movers into a couple of tiers. So you may have like level one, level two, level three. Um, you could have junior uh, wingman, and then you could have senior wingman, and then you could have junior captain, and then you could have senior captain, all right? Your captains are your crew leads. So there's lots of ways to break down your org chart so that way you have more hierarchy. Because if I just have 25 guys that are all the same position, it makes it really difficult trying to figure out like what's the pecking order. And it doesn't allow you to move people up quickly. And that's one of the big things in retention is I want people to get success as fast as possible. I want them to make tips as fast as possible. I want them to make their first $4,000 a month as fast as possible. I want them to get promoted as fast as possible. I want, I want every single person that comes through to be working towards becoming a crew lead driver. Like that's what my goal is. So recap on the four things. Uh, they've hit 90 days with you. They uh, have provided at least three employee re uh, referrals. This is their primary source of income and they've earned a raise or and promotion uh, at this point. So those are the four criteria. And again, I think it, it's mainly this thought process in, in I, I want to build my company based on a foundation, okay? And so that's going to be in the retention part. And so being laser focused, getting people to 90 days, I believe is going to be what rockets your growth long-term because the more people that have been there uh, for a substantial amount of time, more experience, more trained individuals, and you can have less and less anxiety on the service side and continue to go push on the sales and push on the job bookings, right? And that's that's really what we want to scale. So, all right, that's it. We'll come at you with another video next week. Again, if you're seeing this on YouTube, go ahead and hit a like and subscribe. We appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.